Hello, my name is Craig and I'm with Rise Bikes and today I'm going to show you how to both remove and replace the rear tire on your electric bike. Today I'll be showing you this procedure on our new 2021 Rise Model Rise bike. First thing you want to do before flipping your bike, of course, is make sure that you've acquired some proper braces. We have just simple three-legged braces that Velcro to the handlebars. You can use anything, blocks of wood, whatever you need. Basically, you want them to be high enough that all the hand items on your handlebar will be clear and stable enough so the bike's not going to tip over when you flip it over. So now when you actually are going to flip it over, make sure you've got someone to help you. It's much easier. It can be done on your own, but they are heavy. Make sure you take the battery out first if you're going to do that. But of course, with Cinema Magic, and there we go. So to do this procedure, of course, you're just going to need a couple tools, not too many. First, you're going to need yourself an 18 millimeter wrench, four millimeter Allen key, and possibly, but not always, a five millimeter Allen key. I also suggest getting a plain cloth as you'll want to put the bolts and washers that you pull off the bike onto something so you don't lose track of them. And there is always a chance you may need a rubber mallet. So now we're going to start with the removal of the tire. First, you want to take, of course, the cap off the end of your bike. Next thing you're going to want to do is remove the nut. And it is the standard lefty loosey, righty tighty for anyone that always gets confused, like me. Uh, usually that's going to be a bit more firm than I just did. I did loosen this up just so it's easier to show you all. And you simply just remove the nut. Remove the following washer. Now make sure you pay close attention to the order in which the washers all come off the wheel. Our models do have different setting setups for some of them. They won't always be the same, but this is the one for our Rise model bike. Once you remove that one, you'll want to remove this one as well, just because it'll make your life a little easier. And one tool I forgot to mention in the beginning, you will want a pair of snips as you will need to cut the zap strap that's holding your motor cable to the frame. Do not cut your motor cable, do not cut the torque sensor cable as then those will need to be replaced. You do not want to do that. So be very gentle when snipping the zap strap. As you can see, there is not a lot of room here to use your tools. You may want to, at this point, use the five millimeter to remove the derailleur. That is completely up to you. Depends on how comfortable and how much, how easy or difficult you want to make it for yourself. Now, when removing these parts, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually remove this one. It will make gripping the nuts for the axle that much more easy. At this point, you can go ahead and unplug the motor. Now, as you can see here, this is where you get a little tight and you may have difficulty loosening the nut here when you've got the derailleur here. There is enough room, as you can see, just comes down to how much room you yourself want to use and play with. Now, the nice thing about the plug side is the cover cap doesn't easily come off the plug. So all the, all the bolts and washers will remain in the same order that they're on to begin with. You don't have to worry too much about memorizing that, but it's still something to take a thought about. Now, once you've removed the nuts and washers from both sides, now it's time where you can actually lift your tire out. As you can see, 
this is rather secure in there. So a few taps on either side and it pops right out. On the derailleur side, you'll make, you want to make sure you tilt it, push it back. So that way you've got lots of freedom to move everything out. And when you put it back, you can just simply lay the, the chain upon itself and it should sit there just fine. Now, pay special attention to this one washer. You will have noticed this washer rests in your frame and looking at it, you can see it's a standard washer, except there's this one kind of tooth that sticks out. Make sure when you're putting your tire in that it's the tooth is on the bottom side of the bike. So of course, with your bike upside down, you want to make sure that it's pointing up. When you try to put your bike tire back, if it's in the wrong spot, you will notice. So now when putting the wheel back, make sure that again, the washer with the tooth or the lock washer is sometimes maybe called is in the correct position. When it comes to the tire itself, you want to make sure that where the, the cable for the power bends is the same way as the tooth on the washer, the bottom side of the bike. When you're placing it in, you need to get the power cord back inside the chain. So of course, remembering to push back the derailleur so you can get the axle back in. You'll want to keep an eye on your brake calipers. Of course, right here where your brake pads are, you want to make sure your disc is going to line up and go into there just right. Now, if everything sits right, it'll be nice and flush. You can see it's nice and it's even here. You can always look at the bottom side of the axle as well. If there's a gap, you'll want to redo it. If it's nice and touching the frame, that's where you want to be. Always make sure you check both sides. On the power cord side, make sure that you're holding the power cord out and this will make it easier to actually get the nut onto the axle. Now when tightening the nut, many places will say roughly around 40 Newton meters of, of pressure um, or just very hand tight. I mean, on a regular basis, you should be checking your bolts every time you go for a ride to make sure they're tight anyways. So just pay that in mind. Always check your bolts to make sure they're tight before you ride and make sure when you're tightening this, it's as tight as you can get it. Now with the one side axle nut on, you can of course replace the fender bar. And then of course, for the other side, you can just pick up your nuts and washers, making sure to put them back in the order that you took them off. Finishing off with the fender. So once you're now done with bolting securely the axle to your frame, last thing you need to do is attach your motor cable. Now when you're doing this, make sure you're very careful to line up the two arrows together and make sure the plugs go in smoothly because you do not want to damage this. If you have a zap strap, just weave it or slide it through the slots on your frame 
wrap it around the torque sensor cable and your motor cable, tighten it up, and trim off the ends. That is how you remove and replace your rear tire on a Rise bike.